Okay, welcome to the second part of the bubble sort pest for the Comp 1 2011 exam looking at the cricket dice game. Uh, we're going to sort the top scores array and this time we're actually going to look at the uh, array of records and how we sort two fields in an array of records. Um, okay, I'm assuming you know the bubble sort algorithm quite well now, uh, that you're comfortable using arrays of records, you know what that is. If you don't know either of those two things, as I said before, loads of YouTube clips. Uh, the basic gist is that just write your bubble sort code for for one of the fields. In this case, we're obviously going to sort it on score. I guess it could ask you to sort by name, but it's, it's going to be sort uh, score. Um, and then after you've got that done, you can sort of repeat the little sorting bit of the algorithm, the swapping bit of the algorithm for the other fields. Um, don't forget there could be another field in by that stage. It's not beyond the realm of possibility for them to ask you to add in a third field. Um, now, I don't think they will, but maybe they could give you the pseudocode. Uh, it may be that writing the bubble sort could be the section B problem. It's unlikely, but it's possible. So, uh, let's quickly flick to our code. Um, and what I've done is I've just put in the program interface for a procedure called sort top scores. I've also added in uh, a menu item, just like we did when we saved top scores. Uh, if you want to go over that, look at the save top score pest. That shows how to add in an extra menu item and how to, to whack in um, a call for this procedure. Obviously, I'm passing it the top scores array. So, uh, we've got to get started, really. Um, the first thing we need to do is um, is stop this blinking thing work. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to add in some uh, variables. So I've got four variables here. I've got something called sorting elements, and that's basically an idea to say how many of the elements I'm actually going to be sorting at any given time. And I'll initialize that with max size, which is the, the number of elements in the array. Uh, i.e. the number of top scores we're dealing with. I've got a couple of temporaries, uh, something called swap score and something called swap name. Swap score is an integer, swap name is a string because that's the data type of the fields that we're going to be swapping. And I've also got a boolean called swap and that's going to be there to control a loop a little bit later on. Uh, and let's get straight down to this first loop. The idea is that I want to keep doing this until I don't need to do any more swapping. I, I've been once through the loop and there hasn't been a swap at all. Because if there hasn't been a swap, everything's in order. So within this loop, I'm going to initial, I'm going to set swapped to be false and I'm going to loop until swapped equals false. Now clearly I'm going to put something in between this that sets swapped as true if there has been some swaps. But for now, and obviously at the moment this, this loop will only run once. So let's put in a nested loop. Now this nested loop actually goes through, well the first time it goes through almost every element in the array. The second time that uh, this big loop runs, it will go down to all bar 2 of the array. The third time the big do loop runs, it will be all bar 3, because look I've got sorting elements equals sorting elements minus 1 here. So um, this is a stepper, but it's stepping down. So I'm going to go from 1. Now notice I'm going from uh, from 1 here. That's just by convention. When I'm actually writing my high scores to the array, I've, I've started at 1. Um, that's what the code does. It could have started at 0. You have to be a bit careful about that. Um, but in this program, for this exam, the arrays always start at 1. So sorting element, this sorting element here, minus 1, basically means that uh, I'm going to stop on the penultimate element. And there's a good reason for that in a moment, so let's just see why that is. And I'm masked. If the top score i, i.e. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever happens to be, score, that's the field, if that value there, that's the current element, if that is less than the next element, top scores i plus 1 dot score, so if this is less than this, then I'm going to do my swapping. If it's not, I'll move on. 
And that's why I had to go to the penultimate element here, because I'm looking at the next ray, I'm peeking at the next array element. And if I go all the way to the end of the array, clearly, when I go to I plus 1, I'm looking past the array, I've fallen off the bottom, I fell off the bottom. So, if that swap happens, I obviously need the code to work. And this is exactly the same swapping algorithm as you saw in the previous video, where I looked at the, uh, the bubble sort algorithm generically, where effectively I'm assigning the current element to a temporary, then whacking the next element into the current element, and then taking the temporary and putting it into the next element. So it's sort of like a three-way swap, if you like. Uh, and obviously I'm going to set swapped as true, because if I've had some swapping happening, I want swap to be true. Now, brilliant, that's it. The only problem is if I've only swapped this, then the scores will become um, basically dislocated from the names. They'll become, the scores will be uh, swapped and in order, but the names won't be. And of course we want to keep the names with the scores. So what we're going to do is put in an identical little algorithm structure, but rather than it being dot score, the score field, it's going to be dot name. So these are both different fields of the same array of records. This one swaps the score, this one swaps the name. Because they're going to happen uh, at the same time, within the same if statement, within the same bit, within the same run of the for loop, the i's are going to be the same, the i plus 1's are going to be the same, so the elements are going to stay together. And that that's sort of the crucial bit of it, really. That I can swap one bit of the array of records with another bit of the array of records, and they'll stay together. And, of course, if I had a third element, sorry, in a third field, I could add in exactly the same structure, but with dot and whatever that field name happens to be. Okay, so let's test this. I've um, just started the game, and obviously we need to load the top scores. Uh, we better display them. And we can see they're in the normal order. Uh, 12, 45, 2, 1. Um, obviously I've put the high highscores.txt in the debug bin, same as always. What we're going to do now is sort them. 6, bang. Uh, let's display them again. And... This time we've got them in order, 45, 12, 2, 1. Uh, I'm going to quit this now, come back to it, and... Okay, so I'm going to quit this now, and I'm going to make one small change. I'm going to have it so rather than it being 45 at the top, we'll have 1 at the top, so it goes 1, 2, 12, 45. Dead easy. So let's quickly change that. And all I need to do is change this little criteria in the if statement. Rather than asking if the current element is less than the next element, I simply add, is it greater than? And that's it. Job done. I'm going to run exactly the same tests again. See what happens. Okay, so I've just run the program. And let's have a look. Let's load the scores. Let's display them. So this is straight off the highscores.txt. Don't forget, none of this sorting we're doing is being written back to the file, because we're not saving it. It's just changing it in the, uh, the array of records. So let's sort it again. Six, bang, and four to display it again. And look, one, two, twelve, forty-five. I'm now sorting ascending rather than descending. Uh, and... That is the bubble sort in its entirety, really. Um, there's nothing else you need to be able to do. Just, whoops, make sure that you know how to do this little swapping algorithm, that you know how to set the if statement criteria, if current element is greater than or less than the next element, and then it's basically the nested loops. Nested loops an if statement, and swap. If you can remember those, you can program a bubble sort.